There is a need. I think there's a need for, for people to, to recognize that there's more to the banjo than, uh, um, than old time, standard old time style, which is almost one style now. Um, and I, I'd be glad if they would listen more to Pete Steele and some of these other people and uh, play some of that. You know. Yes, as soon as one style looked like it was too competitive, I would move on to something else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so after I'd played maybe seven years, I think, before I got a, a real lesson, I was in California, and my roommate's girlfriend uh, uh, identified uh, Frank Bradbury as being her banjo teacher out in Connecticut. And I said, give me his number. And uh, so I got to Connecticut for some lessons and was able to study for a while under Frank Bradbury, who was a, um, a concert banjoist. And um, uh, he had been a Marine in the First World War, so he's of that generation. And um, what about... Uh, very, very. Anyway, so oh yeah, he wrote the book that Mel Bay has had out, had for many years since the '60s, on fingerstyle banjo. Still good ba banjo book. If anyone wants to learn that style, I recommend the Frank Bradbury book. Okay. That it's in, still in publication. Um, and I've been using it to teach from occasionally. Uh -huh. um, and of course that ties into old time music. How? Well, uh, a lot of the tunes I was learning in that first book were jigs and reels and hornpipes. And um, then we come to people like uh, um, Fred Van Epps, who influenced a lot of the uh, country players. So in 1880s, finger style, two fingers and thumb was pretty much taking over. It was the hot new thing right. from Clawhammer. And um, as recording artists go, Vess Osman and, um, and Fred Van Epps were the ones to listen to. There, there were others too on uh, cylinders and discs. And so people imitated them or, or attempted to. They were using, uh, well, Osman was an ear player, but let's say uh, a lot of them were using music and transcribing, uh, uh, transcribing from band pieces and things. And they were playing all the popular tunes. You know, right. Popular tunes, yeah. Which these days, those old popular tunes are now folk songs, so. Sure. <laughs>
how did you how did you get started playing the banjo? Oh, that's uh, interesting. Uh, I was in high school, and uh, where was this? In Illinois. Okay. And uh, um, I had been listening to Kingston Trio, um, Pete Seeger, uh, and um, one day. Uh, at our school, Hobart Smith came by and played. And about two weeks later, I bought my band, my first banjo, in, at, at the Old Town School in Chicago. Remember what kind of banjo it was? Yeah, it was a um, it was a K. Nice. It was a K. Mm -hmm. I upgraded later to a uh, banjo that had a like a Vega pot and a K neck. <laughs> that was the upgrade. <laughs> And how did you start learning? Um, books. Books, a lot of books. Uh, uh, I had some records. I had uh, New Dimensions in Bluegrass, and I had Frank Prophet, and um, uh, some of those recordings that were in the 60s and there that were, and I, my tastes were already leaning to kind of the earlier stuff. Um, and books. I bought all the books I could find, right? Tablature, and I, Pete Seeger's book was the first, and uh, um, uh, went on and on. Uh, and one of the books I picked up was written in music notation. It was a reissue. Probably the uh, publishing company uh, decided it was the folk boom, let's, re let's republish our book from 1890. <laughs> or more likely 1900 and um, the Lange Fisher book and so but I had to have piano background okay so it was I just had to puzzle it out a little bit especially since it was in a notation so I started pretty early on I was doing um, Pete Seeger's book a little of bluegrass a little, some frailing uh, um, and some classic finger style right all in the first at the beginning right Let's see i had some friends who um took take me to the um chicago folk festival mm -hmm. and they knew a bit uh how to frail and uh, how to pick and so i could get a little help uh, with that um, but eventually i went uh i went to visit wade ward after i'd been playing a few years and uh, stayed at around his house for a few days during the festival back in 69, uh, no, 68, no, 67, 67 maybe, 66, 67, back then, and uh, he showed me some stuff. And, uh, okay. What was that like? Tell me about that. Um, well, you know, uh, he had a, a cow and um, a little house and... Um, Every morning he, they'd take their milk, he'd, the, the oh, craft would come down and pick up the milk at all the houses. <laughs> uh, had to, uh, uh, had, uh, slept in the uh, car, slept, oh, I had a little uh, Comet station wagon, and I was there with a fellow from school, uh, the two of us, he was learning banjo too, uh, that was Stan Volk, I don't know what happened to him. Uh, and we went off, uh, stayed around there, and I, I very closely watched uh, uh, Mr. Ward and would copy down on paper. I would make sure I, I got it right, and then I would copy down uh, in tablature, I guess. I guess I, was, I wrote it tablature. He said he'd never seen that before. <laughs> I learned a few tunes and I uh, forgot a couple, a couple tunes. Uh, anyway, that was good. It got me to hold my hand. I was imitating his hand, got holding my hand right. Uh, and then I went on and on, played, and uh, went to school and went to college for a while and uh, played out in the streets and stuff. Uh, went out to California. San Francisco area, played out there, played 
around the old time scene there, learned to fiddle and uh, other stuff. It's a different type of jig than we're accustomed to. You think of six, eight jigs mostly. But these were very common, 1880s and 90s. And oh, well, as far as the music itself, I think it's, it's more of a challenge. It's, it's meatier in a sense. Right. Uh, you're uh, learning, uh, when you're playing this, you're playing chords and melody which makes it a solo style that you can play by yourself. Right. Um, bluegrass, for instance, banjo, doesn't stand that well by itself. It needs a guitar and a bass, and you know, it's sort of developed around that. Um, but uh, the classic style, or parlor style, or concert style, depending how loud you play, I guess, <laughs> um, is uh, it's full of harmony. The, in fact, the, the music at that time was, the harmonies were, were interesting. Um, the, uh, the ragtime progressions and the march style, uh, the, the three-part and four-part tunes that has, you know, different, uh, instead of A, B, or A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, you have a third part, C, and sometimes right. a D. Right. Yeah. And introductions, and then that's a little more formalized. But you can hear uh, string bands, uh, weems, I guess. What were some of the string bands that played uh, like rags with mandolins? And uh, uh, you can hear them doing this. Banjolele. Banjolele. Not, not likely, yeah. Maybe.